Hello, this is Josh Barry with a, another Photoshop tip here. We're, today we're going to be talking about simple quick edits for doing high key and low key, mainly just focusing on cleaning up the background. Um, I've had lots of questions about high key and low key uh, over the past couple of weeks concerning the artifacts that are left behind in the background when you think you've properly cleaned up your background but then you go to your lab and you have it printed and you get it back and there's things on the white background or the black background that you didn't necessarily see on your monitor. So I'm going to show you how I handle that. Um, so the first thing that I do, I do this to all images. Um, I'll go to sharpen unsharp mask and I'll put in my settings here and this is kind of unfogs the image here if you can see as it applies the haze that's kind of over the digital haze kind of goes away how it go back and forth here there's before and there's after okay so from there uh, to clean up this background this is what uh, I have learned to do and so what I do is I take an adjustment layer and I'll show you I'll bring over to bring over to the screen here the adjustment layer I'll take the levels layer and here you have the black slider the uh, the midtone slider and the highlight slider and uh, operating under the concept that you cannot darken something that is pure white uh, it, so anything that's pure white is going to stay white when you do this and anything that is not pure white in your background you will cause it to get dark and it will expose all of the imperfections in your lighting in the background so you can properly clean it up. First I have to say that one of the most important things in setting this up is of course getting it right in camera. It makes it tremendously dif difficult if your main light lighting your subject and your background lights blowing out your background back here uh, are not uh, metered properly and you're not you don't have the right exposure. If you're too close in exposure uh, you're gonna have a lot more work to do versus when you actually get it right in camera. What I like to do is have my background lights about a stop and a half to two stops brighter than my main light and I set my camera to um, <clears throat> expose for the main light that way the background gets nice and blown out so okay so here we go so I have my adjustments layer right here uh, I'll bring my layers palette over from my other window and you can see I have a levels layer on top so I'll move this back over here for a second and what I do is I drag this slider all the way over and you can see right in here you can certainly see the imperfections that's starting to happen um, from the lights not being there properly uh, or, or, or excuse me uh, not having e even lighting so we're gonna clean that up uh, before I do that sometimes it's uh, it can be so um, so uneven uh, and there could be a, maybe a light didn't fire or something and you might not be able to tell the difference between the edge of their body here versus uh, where the background is. So what I like to do is I like to take I'll bring this over here <clears throat> I like to take my levels layer and drop it down to 50 percent so you can see the edges much more clearly and you can kind of see where the background is uh, where you need to clean that up so we'll move that back over here and what I like to do I know some people use a paintbrush and I use that sometimes as well but when you're dealing with close to skin and clothing uh, what I like to do is use the dodge tool so I'll go here I'll take the dodge tool set it to highlights and I'll change the exposure oh, to about 10 percent and I will open this up here get a nice big brush uh, it's nice and soft and I'll start to scrub whoops hold on make sure when you do this you select your background layer because you will not have anything happen otherwise so you'll sit here and you'll start to scrub and per turn off protect tones I'm glad you actually saw that there uh, it's important to turn off protect tones when you do this I forgot to turn that off which happens a lot which is okay you just turn it off and keep going so there you go you start to scrub it away and maybe uh, if you didn't do this you might not see if you look in here, you might not see this little imperfection in the background. So it's good that you do that so you can scrub that away. 
And one of the neat things about using the dodge tool when you do this is if you get into, if the brush actually goes over them a little bit, it actually doesn't um, alter colors. I mean, if, it, if it's on the brighter side, their, their, their skin or their clothing, it, it might. But uh, if, you're, if you're photographing um, uh, like events, people are in suits or dark clothing, uh, it, you have a lot more latitude. So I'm going to end up doing something here that I'll end up fixing later. I'm just going to go here and scrub a lot of this stuff out. It's not really going to matter here in a minute. <clears throat> As this may end up, this will probably end up getting cropped. But so I'll scrub all this stuff down. And now what I'll do is I will bring my bring my palette over here so you can see. So right now I'm I'm ready. I, I'm I'm happy with that. I'm going to delete this layer. And I'm going to send that back over. And then I'm going to apply a crop. Let's see, maybe they're going to do a 5 by 7. So 7 by 5. So that's the crop we're going to go with. Matter of fact, you know what? I don't really like that crop. You know what I want to do? I, want, I, like, I like this as it is, uh, except, of course, this area under here. So what I'm going to do uh, now, before before I go any further, there's other things that I do to this image as far as eyes and teeth and, and maybe a little bit of skin stuff. But um, for for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, not go into the in-depth stuff that I do as far as uh, other techniques. But to finish this image up, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to do something like this. Now you notice that shadow, of course, underneath there, that doesn't look real at all. I mean, it, anybody with a trained eye can can tell that you know this the shadow underneath her here should extend out a lot more. So this is a quick little trick. Take your magnetic lasso tool, and you're just going to start, and you're gonna draw across. Hold on there, that was a bad start. We're gonna start like this. We're gonna go across. come up and over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer this, Control J, and I'm going to hit Control T, and then I'm going to go up here, Edit, Transform, Flip, Horizontal, excuse me, whoops, uh, I should know better, go back, Flip, Vertical, and then I'm going to line this up here, Maybe I'm going to turn it a little bit. Going to line it up. I should have done a feathered selection, just so anybody uh, with a critical mind is watching this. I should have feathered the selection a little bit, but again, I'm just kind of showing a couple tips and tricks here. Uh, of course, that looks way too unrealistic, so what I like to do then at that point this is our layer here. That's uh, that's the reflection. We're going to drop this way down. We don't want that to dominate the image. We just want very subtle reflection, something that doesn't take away from this little girl's face. Again, if you push that way up, that's not going to look right. So you can play with it wherever your tastes are. I like a faded, real faint uh, reflection underneath, especially for this high key. Uh, it's, it it make, gives it a, a, a fake plexi look. Plexiglass also helps create that reflection. And then we're going to flatten this. Another technique that you can do for the reflection is you can just filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it a little bit. Give it maybe three pixels. Now that blur the entire image. So what you do, here's that Gaussian blur step. You're just going to set your history state right there. Excuse me, backwards. Put your history state right here. Hit your history brush right here. And you're just going to paint in from that history state. Just a little bit of blur there. So it just gives it a little bit more of a realistic feel.
and then from there I <coughs> I finish editing the image um, so uh, there you go there's the high key now let's talk about low key it's the exact same thing except you're dragging a different slider so we're going to click on our adjustment layer here this is palette and you're gonna click on levels and it's the opposite you can't brighten pure black anything that's pure black is going to stay black when you drag this slider all the way over um, so here you can see that there's plenty of cleanup needed plenty of cleanup all this area here none of this is pure black when you go to print it although it may look black on my monitor especially up in this area I, you can see the wrinkles down here of course and at least a little light here but I want this pure black so that's why I drag the slider all the way over and I take my levels layer and I'm going to drop it down about 50 percent 50 percent just like that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to move this out of the way here I'm not going to take the dodge tool this time I'm going to take the burn tool and when I take the burn tool I'm going to set it to shadows and I'm going to move the exposure down again to about 10 percent you can adjust this as needed and what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to go around the edges uh, click on the background layer and I'm going to start scrubbing I'm going to zoom in start to scrub uh, it's not going fast enough for me let's turn it up another 10 percent see what happens and I'm just gonna go and edge around edge around the tire outside of her body making sure I get in right up close and when you're set to these settings you can part of your brush can get over their body and it's not going to hurt it of course if you have a brunette you just have to be careful that you're not blackening their hair again this is important because you don't want to print this black and white image for your clients and then have it come back and you see the your black background artifacts this is also helpful for people with smaller studios uh, you, you get that spill that goes onto the backdrop and makes it a lot brighter than you really want it to be but ideally you want to get your subject as far off that black background as possible that way uh, if you know anything about the inverse square law your uh, your main light will fall off and not uh, affect the the background as much but the closer your main light is to that black background and your subject is as well then you're going to be doing a lot of this okay so while I uh, finish this up I'm going to pause this recording and I'll be back as soon as this is cleaned up okay I am back here you can see that I've gone the whole way around her image here uh, let me just go full screen there we go you can see I've edged the whole way around now the rest is really easy all you're gonna do uh, I like to take a hard brush for this process so I'm just gonna turn the brush up real hard and we don't want that color we want black so we're just going to paint it away and now you can see why we've edged around the entire uh, the entire uh, subject here so that when we take our brush we're not worried about going into their clothing or their arms or their legs or their hair so this is a very easy process to go the whole way around so I'll pause this and I'll come back once again when this is all cleaned up okay I'm back I've cleaned all this up and now I'm going to look at this with a kind of critical eye um, I can see in here <clears throat> I missed some stuff so we're gonna get our dot dodge tool or excuse me our burn tool back out go back in here get that little guy right in front of her stomach and of course right here you can see that 
I completely missed that. But it's always good once you think you're done, it's just to proofread your work, so to speak. And you can see I'm kind of getting my brush here over the um, over her skin, and it's not doing much. That's because I the settings that I'm using I'm using the uh, burn tool, and it's set to shadows. So this brush is really looking for the darker end of the spectrum here to um, affect the pixels. And even if you do brush a little bit much, see what I'm doing there. I'm kind of doing that on purpose because. I want I want you to see what all you have to do if you make those kinds of mistakes. If you really got to scrub in there, you see I'm making all sorts of mistakes. It's all I like to do then is just hit Y. That opens up my history brush. Make the brush smaller, and you can just put it right back. Any kind of mistakes that you made, no big deal. If you want to be really critical, of course, you can zoom way in. Get your dodge tool out again. See, I hit, I hit, I hit O for uh, excuse me, burn tool. I keep saying the wrong brush, but it's the burn tool. But it's it's under the same button. But you just long press here, and you can choose dodge tool or burn tool. But we're using the burn tool. And if you want to really get close here, really be critical. But I'm not going to spend too much time in this. I, I don't want to make this video too long. But you can see here now that this is all nice and clean for the most part. We're going to delete. Here, I'll show you. Bring this over. We're going to delete this layer now. And there is the image. that It's not finished. I haven't done anything as far as editing to it yet. Uh, but that is the clean background image. And here we'll do a snapshot. You can see there's before, and there's after. And you can see the belly. Okay, I got to go back over the history brush with the belly right in this area. That's okay. Um, one of the things you can do to just kind of protect yourself for insurance reasons, you just duplicate your background, and that way you can work on a, a copy. <clears throat> That way, if you ever go too far down the line and you want to bring something back from the ori original image, you at least have that in the background. But all I would do is just get my history brush and paint that back in. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. This is Josh Barry with Josh Barry Photography. Photoshop Tutorials 2013. Have a good evening.